The company Elugu sent me their latest FDM 3D printer, the Neptune 3, which I think has some pretty cool features, so I wanted to share my thoughts with you. This is my first Neptune printer, but it reminds me of the popular Ender 3, which I also own. But I think this printer has many more improvements and cool features for roughly the same price. So I want to show you the setup process, a few test prints, and then I'll list the pros and cons and why I actually really like this printer. They estimate that the setup time was about 10 minutes, and that's about the time it took me. The box came with everything I needed to get set up. It has the printed instructions, but also a flash drive with a great assembly video. And hey, it's nice that they included these extra nozzles and filament tubes. So like I said, they included the flash drive that includes the assembly video, but I'll give you a quick overview. This top frame attaches to the base, and then the power supply attaches to the frame. And there's a couple cables to attach in the back, but that's pretty much it, so 10 minutes is very fair. I followed the instructions and I attached the frame with the four provided screws and the Allen wrench. And I made sure that the Elegoo label on the frame was facing forward. The next step is the power supply, and make sure that your voltage is the correct setting for your country. I set mine to be 115, since that's about the voltage in my power outlets. Then I attached the power supply with the two screws. Now, I have to talk about this detachable touchscreen. I like how the screen can detach, and it has a flexible cable so you can move the screen wherever you want. So most 3D printers out there have about the same monochromatic, pixelated screen with a single knob that's both a turn and push button. But this screen is a real win for me since it detaches, it's a higher resolution, it's a touch screen that's quick to respond, and the quality feels great. The last part of the assembly is the spool holder and the handle that attaches to the top of the frame, with the provided screws to hold it in place. And I, I like having this handle at the top, it does make it easier to move the printer around. The manual shows you how to connect the remaining cables in the back, but my printer already had several of these already connected, so I just connected the remaining two and then I was done. And that's the last piece and oh, okay, yeah, it's a 3D printer. So now it's time to test out the printer and see the print quality. Before we can print, we need to calibrate the bed. And this is what I really like. The printer has a 16-point RSG leveling system with a pressure sensor on the print head to record the distance between the nozzle and the hotbed at each point. Auto leveling is so valuable to me because it's more accurate than turning the four wheels a fraction of a millimeter each time to level the print bed. This is a much better system and can be more accurate. And this auto leveling will get it very close, but set the tolerance even closer until there's just a slight friction on the paper. I heated it up and loaded in some gray filament that I already had. And hey, I noticed a small amount of green filament, which is a great sign and it shows that the company tested the printer before they shipped it. Another great feature I like are these belt tensioning knobs. Not having the right tension on these belts can really cause several printing problems, so these knobs are really nice to have. The SD card came with a test print, so I captured a time lapse to show you the layer by layer printing process. And I have to say, this is the best print bed I have ever used. It held the print in perfectly, but when cooled down the prints fall off so easily. So I definitely prefer whatever material this print bed is. And I like that the print bed is magnetic, but I would like to have some guides to help align it in place. The magnets are very strong, and I found myself redoing it several times. And it might be possible for me to 3D print a guide rail on the back, and maybe that would help. And here are the results of the test print. I think it looks nice and it captured a lot of the details, but I assume that this print was set up to be printed at 0.2mm layer lines, but I know that this printer can do much better. So I printed another one at the highest Cura setting preset at 0.06mm layer lines. And here are the side-by-side -side results. You can really see a difference in the hands and the arms. Now there is a price to pay for quality. The lower resolution on the left took about an hour and 20 minutes, and the higher resolution on the right took about 4 hours and 30 minutes. So it's great that this printer can handle both versions so well. And to put this layer height into perspective, if this is 1mm, then this is about the thickness of a credit card, then this is the thickness of our first print and second print. So the second print is more than twice the detail. So the Cura Slicer program is provided on the SD card, and it's easy to set up, and you can just drag and drop a model onto the program, and you can use one of the provided presets, and then hit slice. And it will calculate the slices, and you can save this onto an SD card, and then print it. And again, I love how easily the model falls off the print bed. And I'm really impressed with how well this printer prints models with moving parts like hinges and gears. And everything that I printed fit together and worked very well. And I really love finding these cool models made by super creative people online, so I'll add a link in the description to all the models that I print. So I found this Daredevil Billy Club's prop, since it was something tall that I could test print. So this printer is great for printing really tall pieces if you need to. One more great feature to point out is this box. It can detect when the filament stops moving due to a break or when you run out of filament. So I wanted to test out just how well this works. 
And sure enough, after a little time went by, it did detect the break and allowed me to replace the filament and continue printing. And it will also do the same thing if you lose power. So to recap, I really like this printer and I would recommend it, and I'm going to enjoy using it myself. So some of the pros are the auto leveling, the belt tensioning knobs, the great quality and detachable touchscreen, the loss of filament and power detection, the large build area, the great price, the quiet printing, and the great detachable print bed. And some of the cons would be I wish that it heats up faster, I wish the detachable print bed had some auto aligning. But anyway, that's my review, and I personally would recommend this printer. I did enjoy it, and I'm going to be using it. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope to see you next time, and thank you for watching.